In this video, I want to help you to find the right camera for 500,000 Naira or less. A bit of disclaimer. Please note this is from my own point of view. But before I begin, I have been MIA for a while now, which I must apologize for. But I can assure you, I am here to stay. So without further ado, let's get right into it. In no order of priority, number one on my list is the Sony ZV-E10. You can grab this camera body alone for $700, which is approximately 370,000 Naira. I think for beginners, it's a pretty good starting point, so you can easily decide to choose a lens by yourself. There are actually a few strengths of this camera, because you can attach all Sony E-mount lenses and also FE lenses, which are full frame. This allows you to invest into lenses in case you want to upgrade to a full frame Sony camera or a more expensive APS-C sensor. These cameras offer 4K resolution up to 30 frames per second which is definitely great but it has like two downsides. The first one is that if you want to use the internal stabilization of this camera, you have a pretty significant crop so your image gets a bit tighter. So I would recommend getting it with a kit lens because the kit lens comes with opt optical image stabilization so you don't need a digital image stabilization. It's a really good entry level camera. Next is the Canon M50 Mark II, priced at approximately 287,000 Naira. Introduced in October 2020, it has a 4-megapixel, 24-megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. This is a great budget camera with interchangeable lens and features a fully articulated screen which is flexible and useful for selfie shots and video. Although the Canon M50 Mark II has the same AF system as its predecessor, the Canon M50, it has face and eye tracking. This is a great neat feature but doesn't stand up to the competition. In as much as it is 4K cap capable, my advice would be to stick to the 1080p mode as the 4K mode has a 1.5 crop factor where you lose the camera's dual megapixel autofocus as it becomes contrast detection only. It's making the 4K mode disappointing in wider scenes. Another strength of the M50 Mark II is that you can easily stream directly to YouTube, which presents it a great option in terms of image quality when compared to using a mobile phone. But then, again, I'm disappointed that this camera has no headphone socket which would have been great for monitoring audio levels when shooting video. This issue is common with most budget-friendly cameras. Our next camera on the list is the Canon M6 Mark II. I've been getting a lot of questions about this camera. With a 32.5 megapixel APS-C sensor, I would say it's the best overall camera for run and gun, but also stationary footage because it has really good autofocus. It offers 4K, up to 30 frames per second and actually if you want to stabilize the footage from the Canon M6 Mark II it crops in less than the Sony ZV-E10 so it's a bit better sometimes for vlogging or if you want to get wide angle shots that are stabilized and you can also use lenses with it that are not stabilized without cropping too much into the image. The video quality of the Canon M6 Mark II is also really good from my research. The image is quite pleasing as it has Canon color science and as we all can agree, Canon colors look just beautiful straight out of the camera. I would actually say that the Canon M6 Mark II is the camera that I would recommend to most beginner content creators because of the advantages that I've mentioned before. It features the latest version of the familiar Canon mini structure. Eye and face tracking work very well enough but the catch here is that your subject needs to be pretty large in the frame to find its eyes. 
And once it has started focusing on faces, the camera will prioritize this over your choosing autofocus position. Subject tracking works well, but will occasionally drift out of your chosen subject region, which can be easily corrected by simply tapping on your screen or your focus point. It features no flat or log profiles for grading and loses a bit of quality in video mode when applying an electronic shutter. Another good thing is there's also a 120p slow motion feature, but that is only in the 1080p mode without autofocus, so you lose autofocus. Canon promises a 10-bit signal over the HDMI, which could be handy for improved image, especially if you wish to get more out of this small beast. Lastly, there is also no 3.5mm jack input for headphone monitoring. Next on my list is the Panasonic G9 at approximately 500,000 Naira. The Panasonic G9 is a 20.3 megapixel micro four thirds sensor camera and comes with sensor stabilization, which is a really good. Panasonic has one of the best sensor stabilization on the market, so you can get really stable footage straight out of your hands. I say this because I have owned a Panasonic GH5, which I'm currently filming from from the moment it was released. But Panasonic generally has a problem, which is the autofocus socks, which doesn't mean that you can't use it. You can press the AF button and it locks on the subject and the focus stays where it is. That actually works pretty good with these cameras, but the autofocus doesn't track your face or anything like that, or you can expect that it will lose your face and then focus will haunt. But if you are mostly behind the camera, then so not so much of a problem. The G9, which I've used once, comes with 4K 60 frames per second, which is, really, which is a really good option, so you can do slow motion in 4K. It also has 10-bit recording, which helps a lot with color grading. It's a bit more professional already, but well, if you really are passionate about videography and you're on a budget, then that can actually be a pretty good option. The G9 takes most of the boxes for a great micro four thirds video camera and it's a particularly good steals camera, just that the autofocus could be a little bit better. This camera offers similar dynamic range to a sibling, the GH5, which is a good thing in preserving highlights. Although it appears similar to that of the GH5, there are areas of the scene where the GH5 seems to hold onto detail very slightly better. This is because the GH5 offers 4 to 2 video. So of course, what's even more important then your camera is to learn how to shoot with it. I hope I'm able to help you choose a camera with a budget of 500,000 naira or less. But remember, what makes an excellent videographer is not just the camera, but his skills. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Looking to see you in the next video. Bye bye.